Well, as you can tell, it is a uh, chilly one this morning. It's in the 30s, and I wasn't quite ready for that. <laughs> anyway, got uh, quite a few things that uh, need to get done. We have uh, located a source for a alternate feed, and so I'm going to have to... Uh, we have a, a homemade bulk bin down there that in years past we've used for corn. Don't think we're going to use uh, corn in bulk this year like we have in the past. But uh, I need to get it out, get it cleaned up, figured out about uh, putting a, a more secure top on it, and uh, get it ready to accept the uh, the bulk feed, and then the uh, the bulk alternative feed. And then the liquid feed tank, I need to get it totally drained out because that liquid feed is heavy. Uh, see if it's feedable as it is right now. Uh, it's been stored for a while, but uh, if it is, I'll get it drained out into tubs, get it fed, put it out for the cows, put it out for the sheep uh, as we need right now just to finish up that last little bit that's in that tank so I can get that tank cleaned out and get ready for a, uh, another season. So we've uh, got quite a few things that we uh, need to get done. So what do you say we uh, let me get the gate for you here and we'll head on down to the farm and let's get busy. I'm video in here for a little bit because it's a little bit out of the wind. But uh, let me turn this around here real quick so you can see uh, the bolt bin that is going to be the first thing that I'm going to be working on uh, getting out of here. All right, there she is. So I'm going to see if I can get, because it sits on a pallet right there. It's turned a little bit on the pallet, but anyhow. Uh, see if I can get some of that stuff moved over out there so I can get the tractor up in here, catch a hold of that and take it out so here there's the liquid feed tank there's not a whole lot left in there 50 75 gallons maybe at the most uh just gonna have to see what condition it is in if it's not in feedable condition then i'm just gonna have to dispose of it but i uh, need to get that cleaned up because we do use the liquid feed supplements from very heavy uh, during the winter time of course got to get all this stuff out from in front of it before I can even get to it because unfortunately where it sits the only way I can really do anything with it is just to physically take it off of the pallet stack out to the center here and then once I have it out to the center here then I can catch it with the tractor and uh, take it on out I'm going to kind of tell on myself a little bit. I don't really know what's left in that bin. Almost afraid to look because in the wintertime when I'm freezing and I'm trying to get corn out of that bin, which when it gets low, it's not really easy to get out. And it takes me 20 minutes to get a, to, with a shovel in that little spout raking to try to get one five gallon bucket worth of corn. I'm bad about saying bin's empty. So a lot of times it's not really empty. It's just taking too long to do it by hand through the bin and I'm done with it because I'm freezing. So we'll find out together what's still left in there and what kind of condition it's in. I was hoping that I could get to the corner of that pallet and 
turn it so I can get better fully under that pallet. It looks like I'm going to have to try to turn it physically before I can get the forks in there. That thing falls on me. Somebody call 911, please. Now the moment of truth. Get this thing untarped. It's the tarps we had underneath it. And I've also learned that this tarp has been a really good place for wasp nests. Yeah. I have found about two yellow jacket nests and a couple of red wasp nests up under this thing. That's why this year I am voting to actually make the top. There's not too much left in there. Maybe I'm going to uh, set this down flat, get the bucket out from under there, set it down on the ground. I'll bring the pallet up just a little, or the uh, forks on the tractor up just a little bit, and then put the ladder inside here, I think. That may be the easiest way for me to get it out, I'm not real sure. Usually I have a second person here to kind of spot me a little bit, but I think I can get it done. I don't want that to be, I don't want the uh, step up to the forks to be any worse than like stepping up to the back of the tractor or back of a truck, I mean. But then I'm going to have to get over into that. Right. Hang on just a second. That's a little higher than the back of a truck step, but oh well. Let's see if I can get up here. I mean, I know I can get over in there. This side's going to be the easiest because the slant on the floor is closest up here. But all I'm going to say about this is if I start flailing like a whale trying to get back out of there, don't you laugh. Yeah, I know you will. That's why I'm putting this over here. Ha! If I have to, I can set that down in there to get my little extra height on step out. Eh, ain't stupid. Sometimes not real bright, but not stupid. Look at there, ha, oh, I did it. Of course that was the getting in, that's the easy part. This band 
probably 10, 12 years old. I'm guessing, maybe more. But it has uh, come in handy for us. We got it second hand. And it's just a plywood bin. And uh, he used heavy exterior plywood, two before frame on the inside, pole bar nails. And then they put that slant floor on the bottom. And that helped a whole lot. But. <coughs> Mama donkey. All right, here we go. <coughs> oh, ha! Ha ha! I didn't give you a chance to laugh. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about for just a minute. I don't want to bore people because apparently I do that a lot. But anyway, pardon me. When I'm talking about an alternative feed, let me turn this up here just a little bit. Yes, sun's bright. Sorry, I could find a better place, but I'm just going to do this real quick right now. When I talk about an alternative feed, a lot of people think of an alternative feed as a replacement for what you've been doing. When I talk about an alternative feed, I'm not looking at talking about a complete replacement because what we're possibly getting doesn't carry enough protein fats on its own to make a complete feed. So there's a difference between a feed supplement, a alternative feed, or a complete feed. So what we'll have to do is we'll take the feed ration that we've currently been feeding we will adjust the amounts accordingly mix it with this alternative feed product that we're going to be getting to make a final feed a complete feed then it is not a complete feed on its own so when i talk about an alternative feed i'm not talking about a replacement it's not something that we're going to completely replace the uh, feed regimen that we're already doing. It's just an additive to help defray the feed cost of what we're spending for that base feed. We use that base feed for pretty much everything, for the goats, the sheep, the cows, pretty much everything. So we'll make some fine-tuned adjustments uh, on the amount of that base feed uh, coupled with the alternative feed to make a final feed product. What that means is we're going to be taking portions of the feed we're feeding now, portions of the bulk feed, we'll mi mix that together. Also probably add some uh, a vitamin packet to that as well. I call it a packet, but just a measure of AD&E, selenium, stuff like that in a premix, and that we would add to that just to make sure that that feed is a complete feed and has everything they need. Lots of times people get caught up looking at just fats and proteins when they're talking about a feed. They forget to look at the mineral content or the vitamin content. A, D, E, selenium, all extremely important, especially for ruminants. Make sure you know if you have to spend $30, $40 to get your feed tested so that you know what you're looking at as far as whether you have simply a lower quality alternate feed or if you have a complete feed if you have managed to put together a mix that is a complete feed and a complete feed means exactly what i said it's complete it doesn't need anything else there's no other additives needed well it's getting on 12 o'clock so unfortunately looks like that may be the only project that i get done right now uh, like i said we're going for lunch with the kids and then uh, after lunch, we're or after, we're going to be packing up our uh, our beef and bringing our beef home. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. So anyway, if I'm able to get to uh, working on that liquid feed bin this afternoon, then I'll uh, I'll video and make you part of that as well. 
that's not going to be horrible. It's just because of where it's sitting so far in there and there's no wiggle room. We're basically just going to have to physically pull it off that pallet stack and uh, get under it that way. So I'm not real sure how much liquid feed is still left in there. That stuff weighs about 9 pounds a gallon. So it's very heavy. And it doesn't take much to add up to a immovable force, if you know what I'm saying. So we'll see uh, if we can get into that this afternoon. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping so. All right. So this is one of the issues. I'm trying to film tonight. Can't see much. But I'm fixing to go get a bale of cows. And I'm going to do something a little different. Yeah, this is kind of the view. Here we're not. 